All right, today's show is going to be about what are you using for protection? <laughs> really? It's not what you think. Hello everybody, my name is Barry Horvath and this is Moving Forward TV with your local market update. And I am Delenn Gaston, thank you so much for joining us today. And no, we're kind of talking about protection, but... We are talking about protection. <laughs> what were you thinking when I said that? <laughs> Life lock protection. <laughs> no, it's totally different. We're going we're gonna to talk about... Protect your money. Yeah, we're going to talk about a lot of things about protection in, in today's forever fraud world, as we call it. Yes, I know. We're going to talk about ways to protect yourself and your well-being and your finances. I know. And your life. Uh -huh. Let's face it. Well, let's right? face it, yeah, because your money is your life, right? Yeah, yeah, and you're, yeah, it's just so much more and more today you hear about all of these things happening to right. good people. I mean, right. Bad things happen to good people. So the time. list of, of all of the stuff that happens, that's one of my favorite lines, by the way. Right. I think you know that. Bad, Bad things, things happen, happen to good, good people. people. They do. Um, I mean, it's a shame. It is. It is. You know, we hear a lot Wait. about all of the fraud that's going on out there. Wire fraud in the real estate industry, in the title world, and things like that. Um, scammers at the gas pumps, you know, the... Um, the gas skimmer. pump. Skimmer, that's They're it. They're called skimmer. They're not scammers. <laughs> scammers. Scammers do the skimming. Scammers install the skimmers. <laughs> yeah. And they're doing them at other places as well, not just the gas pumps, you know, um, ATM machines and things like that. So we hear about all of that stuff. So we wanted to talk a little bit about just touch on some quick things that we um, uh, found to protect your money, protect your funds, protect oh. your cards from getting scammed. In fact, we have a top 10 list. Skimmed. We have a top 10 Go list. Go figure. You know what? And number Can I tell them the truth? It was a top 15 list, but... <laughs> I cut it down to 10 because I lost page two. <laughs> True <So>. story. <laughs> you know, and, and the number one thing on the list, and I think I get notifications all the time and my clients get them all the time, is they say you should opt in for electronic statements. I know, right? And, yeah, because now... Statements coming in the mail are more likely to get, you know, they're through a lot of hands. And not that our friends at the post office are ever doing anything wrong. But no. It passes no. a lot of ways. They set in right. mailboxes. People go in right. mailboxes. They can get your account number. So the number one suggestion is go ahead and get the electronic statement. And you know what's kind of funny about that? I think a lot of people um, don't do the electronic statement because they're afraid that, putting my information online or in an email, it's going to get stolen. Yeah. So they they're think they're doing the right thing by, you know, not doing it online and having it go to their mailbox. Yeah. But, right, people yeah, go figure. steal mailbox mail go all the time. So that's number one on our list. Number two is... Keep a shredder. Yeah. Keep a shredder handy. Why do you think we and, should keep a shredder handy? And they like the one that the does... The crosscut. The crosscut. Crosscut. You're, you're lost for words today. I know. I don't know. <laughs> Late day. I don't have coffee. I have water. Yeah, I'm trying to get yeah. better here. So. You know, the crosscut shredder, because um, they cut them into more pieces, and believe it or not, those criminals are looking through trash. You might think that they are. they're not, but they do look through. And that's why they say shred them, because they are looking through your trash. That's the, a prime way for them to get your account numbers and things like that. Yep. You know, it's not on here, but another thing I wanted to say about that, too, and, uh, you know, another reason to shred it, a lot of times people will ask you, well, what's the last four of your social or something like that, or just give me the last four of the account number or something. You know, they have ways of getting the first half. So don't think that, oh, well, I only gave them the last four digits of my credit card number or whatever, just, you know, for verification purposes. They don't need that. Um, and there's, it's a relatively easy to get the first half. You know, it's on your credit report. Go figure. All right. That's number two. Number three is to protect your identity. And how do we do that? 
freeze your credit report. Speaking of credit reports, you know right. what? And I know you hate that when uh, you're trying to rent, somebody's applying for a loan, <laughs> and they're like, I can't run the credit because you got to freeze, you got to unfreeze it. Well, you can. It's easy to unfreeze it because people do it all the time, right? So, yes. So you know that. So you know if somebody's trying to run your credit. Um, and they have full access to do it, they're going to be able to do it. So if you put that freeze on it, it'll stop them from anybody from running your credit and maybe setting up a new account on your name mm -hmm. without you knowing. Right. And here's here's how um, why it's important because they can get into credit card uh, credit running. Um, capabilities so they run your credit now they have all of your cards like I said all of your credit report has all of your credit card numbers on it doesn't have the last four digits usually so if they're asking you what's the last four digit of that discover card or whatever just for identification I thought purposes they only put or whatever the last four numbers on the account no on your no. on your credit report is the first Half the okay. last four is missing. The missing so one. okay, yeah, that's why. And then, but You're talking then, about but, your credit I'm but what, on your statement, statement that comes right. in the mail, what's there? The last four numbers. Right, right. So now they have a copy of your credit report. They have in from your trash your Discover card statement or whatever with the last four numbers. Now they have your whole Discover card number right. or whatever. Right. So that's why it's real important to put a freeze on your credit report so that they can't run your credit report and Excuse they can't me. get your, your son, credit report. Your son's calling you. Oh. Excuse me, it's not. <laughs> hey, Dylan, we're in the middle of taping the show right now. Um, oh, can you call? Yeah, it's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, can you call your mom <laughs> later? You're on TV, by the way. Sorry. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. Hi, Hi, mom. Oh, wait. Dylan says hello. <laughs> Dylan says hello. All right. So, call us later, okay? Mm. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Love you. Right, so that's part of our show. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. No, I did not. have it on silent. He decided to answer it no, no, anyway. No. It was buzzing pretty loud. It was there. buzzing. Yeah, well, it was pretty loud. All right, so um, number four on our list is stop entering sweepstakes. Yeah, I know. What I love that great, one. I mean, because a lot, and let's face it, some of these sweepstakes may be oh real. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they might be real. They might be legitimate, but very few really are. So And they you, sell your information. And you are giving them all that personal information that yes. they shouldn't have. And all they want to do is... Or you're giving them the last four of your social or the last four of one something. of your credit cards your or... Your address, your you know, email address. Something so you you're giving them. you are telling them a lot about yourself. Right. So stop entering those sweepstakes Tuh. that you're not going to win. Anyway, right. Yeah, yeah. All right, so... Stop. Next one, number five. Stop giving out your social security number. Now, granted, if you are applying for a loan for a mortgage or a car loan or something like that, then yes, they need to have your uh, social security number. However, if you are at the doctor's office... They don't need your social security number. They only want that in case you don't pay the bill. So guess what? They can get about get it later. They're not running your credit right now. They do not need your credit card number. Um, the person who um, wrote the article said that they have many a time left it off of the doctor's forms, and not one doctor has ever come back and said, hey, I really need that. So there you have it. They're not going to not treat you just because you didn't put your social security number on there. So, so you think. Yeah. All right. Um, next one on our list is don't use a debit card, but use a credit card. I I am a big proponent in that. Ever since the skimmers came out at the yeah. gas pumps and everything, by I the only scammers. use it. By the scammers. Yep. Skimmers by the scammers. I only use a, a, a credit card because, yeah, that can can have a limit on it of 50 bucks or whatever it is. If you have a mm -hmm. false charge, they'll do that. Whereas a debit card, if they wipe out your, your account, it takes a lot longer yes. um, to get that back. And it, you're covered on a credit card, let's face right. it. All right, so we're, we got a couple more we're going to give you for these tips, but then we're going to get into the differences of pre-qualification um, versus pre-approval. Pre and we'll, we'll do that right after this, after we give you some more protection. Dude, I got this cool. Consumer Advocate, your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes.
we're better back. We're better back. <laughs> we are better back. <laughs> the better back store. All right, we're back. We're, we're back. <laughs> we're back. That store's closed. With by better the way. yet. <laughs> I know. We're back with better yet. So better yet on uh, number seven. Number we're, seven we're just is flying through these. Is using mobile payments like bill pay online is actually right. safer than sending a check. Don't tell my mother that. She thinks you should write a check because she thinks you should put your information online, kind of like and, this. And you know, the thing is, that's a good point because they feed on people like your parents. Yep. Because they're elderly and they don't they don't trust online and that yep. kind of thing. So they, they think that it's safer. The and it's got all their routing information and bank information. Yeah, and Ooh. they probably put it, mail it from there, right, and put the little flag mm -hmm. up and everything. Yeah. That little flag is saying, guess hey, what? I got hey, something good. there's something going out here. It's crazy. So Apple Pay and Google Pay are actually your friends. Safer. Yeah, because I just you, learned rather this. than credit card, because what happens is the signal that you use are not actually getting a credit card number or a debit card number um, with Apple Pay or Google Pay. So it's kind of you know you wouldn't think that that would be safer, but it is absolutely safer. And write this down. I said it here on our show first. Okay. That's the wave of the future. You're going to pretty soon, you're not even going to see cards anymore. That'll be the new way. Everything is going to be in Google. Electronic, just that way. So. I know it's easier, and I guess it's, it's I don't know. Yeah. I haven't used it, so All right. I, I can't say much about it. So the it. biggest thing happening now, which drives me and you crazy <laughs> both, is these scam calls. You know, you get a lot of them. Even even uh, cell phones are now yeah, open game. Coming. They can have your cell phone so numbers as well. The first thing you should do is go to the Do Not Call registry. Mm -hmm. Put your name on it. Um, not that that's going to stop them. If you go to do not call gov, you can put your name on the list. And you need to continue to do it because once it does, a year it, it expires. expires. Yeah, so, so every year call. you have to go and back. And for do those of you who are old school, I'm going to give you a phone number if you want to write it down. Um, 800 three. I'm sorry. 888 no. Again, 888-382-1222. and that'll that you can be on the registry on that. So um, and put both your cell. You have to do it for both your cell phone and your home phone. If, if you still have home phone. Does anybody have a home phone? Have, if you have a home phone. Or if you have a home phone, you probably shouldn't watch our show. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, number no, nine. Probably not. Um, do not answer from numbers you don't recognize. You know, that's hard because a lot of us in the sales industry, I know, I get a ton of calls. My phone rings constantly. All the time, I know. Constantly. And we in the and sales you know world what, have to answer. You know what I've learned now? A couple of tricks. Number one is you can answer but don't say anything because they cannot connect to you if it's a robo dial. Uh -huh. They don't recognize you. Um, wait for them to speak because they won't, you know, they wait for you to speak. And um, the other thing I do is I, you know, Apple has that auto reply. I do that, hey, can I call you later? Or sorry, I'm on the phone now or whatever. And it'll come back, it'll say, oh, this is a landline. But if it's a legit person, they're actually going to respond and say, yeah, this is Bill, I was referred to you, blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, there you go. That's so, a great idea. Um, I do that a lot. So, you know, um, it works for me. That's cool. That's yeah. very cool. I didn't very think cool. of that one. And then the last one, number 10. Is be prepared to hang up. So, Wham! yeah, I know. <laughs> so, like, if somebody gets you on the phone, don't use the word yes because they could be recording you. Yes. And they could actually use it for verification purposes later to right. say yes. Yes. Oh, I had their permission to call them. I had their permission to do this. Here's their recorded yes. Yeah. So, don't ever say the word yes yeah. or don't. anything like that. Just hang up. Just hang you up. Don't talk to them, hang up. Say, Not interested. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. That's all you got to do. All right. So those are essential rules of protection. To protect your money. Oh, yeah. Um, and protect you personally. Yes. So let's talk about the difference between now what everybody asks all the time. Pre-approval and pre-qualification. All, all the time. What is so the difference between So at this point in the show, I'm going to exit the stage and Delyn's going to take over. <laughs> what, are you going to go to the bathroom or something? No. I'm just kidding. I'm just sitting here. We do get that question a lot from our realtor partners. What is the difference between a pre-qualification or a pre-qual and a pre-approval? Okay, so the biggest differences between those two, a pre-qualification is when the person, when we first speak with the person and we're just asking them the questions and they are providing us the answers. Where do you work? How long have you worked there? You guys probably do a lot of this yourself. You do a pre-qualification pre without even knowing it. How much do you make? Do you have any car payments? Do you have any student loans? That kind of a thing. Do you pay alimony or child support? So it's really just us asking them the questions, jotting down the answers, 
and running the numbers to see what their debt to income ratio is, what their debt to income ratio is going to be so should that, they purchase this house they're interested in. And you can usually tell, I mean, I know you all know this, but buyers are liars. Yes. Because typically what happens is, unfortunately with a pre-qualification is, oh, what did you make last year? Well, I made 50 grand. Right. And then all of a sudden you got their W-2 and they made 47,000. Right. That $3,000 eroded the buying power of what you pre-qualified them for. So right. I can understand why people would want a pre-approval versus a pre-qualification. Right. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes we just take in a quick look. And, mm -hmm. and occasionally, occasionally, people underestimate. There was that one time, do you remember? <laughs> that one. The other thing is with you know pre-qualification, you have to make sure that the loan officer who is asking the questions What's is a asking loan a loan originator, asking the right questions and probing far enough on it. It's, it's not just how much do you make and do you have any car payments and, and loans, right. you know, that kind of thing. There's more. A lot of, I, many, many, many a time we have had to do a loan that has fallen out at another lender because, well, nobody told the loan officer, the loan originator, oh, he pays, you know, somebody pays child support of, you know, 100 bucks a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, that blows the debt ratio. You have to ask those questions and, and often, which is why people want a pre-approval. So with a pre-approval, so what, what is a pre-approval then? Well, pre-approval is when you actually have the documents in hand, you can verify them because... Send us the docs. Yeah, because that self-employed borrower that made right. the 50000 last mm. year, unfortunately, on the phone, he didn't tell you that he wrote off 49000 of the fifty grand right. he made. So now right. he really only made $1,000. So that can make it a little bit of a challenge. So It's funny, then, when I'm on the phone with a pre, um, for a pre-approval pre or pre-qualification... Pre and I, I, and if the, the person's self-employed, I'll tell them, do you have your tax return handy? Read me line seven, read me line 12, read me line 13. Right, right. Are those numbers accurate on the new return? No, on the new return, I, I no, I, I have to, <laughs> they're not. I'm, very, I'm really bummed, I gotta tell you, I am really upset because I had these things down, you know? Uh, Flip through three pages, that's the Schedule C. Okay, go to, yeah. to line 13. <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny. That's so funny. All right. So, all right. You know what? We're going to talk more about this pre-approval first um, prequal mm -hmm. when we come back. And we're going to give Barry and Delin isms in our last segment. So stick around for that. We'll be right back. Dude, I got this. Consumer Advocate, your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. back talking about the difference between pre-qualification, I can't even say it, <laughs> pre-qualification <laughs> and pre-approval. Right. And you know what? It's um, it's so funny because sometimes you get, um, you know, my a realtor says, oh, my buyer's already got a pre-approval. Right. 
and you're wondering what is that really because you didn't do it and I don't know about you but I don't trust anybody but you and you probably don't trust anybody but me right. there's not there's probably some really good people in the industry but a lot of places just run your credit oh, I and know. they say oh they're good to oh, go oh they got a 670 score they're good to go yeah, really that, there's <laughs> so much more to it today there is. yeah you know with um, and a lot of the the um, I hate to say it, but the no, the <laughs> just say it. <laughs> a lot of these people are just um, order takers, so to speak, right. and they're not licensed originators. They're just asking questions, and they can't. They don't know how to really do it, and they don't know. You know, when we ask a question, it prompts another question sometimes. Sure, it does. Right? Sure it does. Yeah. Um, I always ask you, what do you say to people on the phone, and you like, I don't know. You I know. know. You have a whole flow of things that you say. <laughs> I know, and he says I have know. a whole script, but it, you don't it, have really a script. It just it just it just it rolls, just rolls and right off as question, I talk to it them. Triggers another, you know, when yes. you're asking about bankruptcy, when you're asking yes. about foreclosure, when you're asking about child support, when you're asking about right. you know uh, divorces, when you're asking about it, it's just one thing right. leads to another. And the, that, the that, other that. one that comes up sometimes is waiter or waitress. Oh, I made fifty thousand dollars last year. What do you do? Um, you know, I work at so and so steakhouse. What do you do there? You know, right, right. and and there's a, sadly there's a lot of originators who don't ask those questions because you got to dig. It's a lot. It's, you got to dig. And it's almost like it's our job now to find out what's wrong. Yes. What's wrong with this file, or what could go wrong? Right. And, and we're doing it to protect our buyer because right. we don't want them to spend four hundred fifty dollars on appraisal, right? Four hundred dollars on an inspection, mm -hmm. and, no. and and get the seller's and hope up and the title company. And a lot of people are relying. It's a and major get the purchase. It's a big deal. Mad at us, you know. Yeah. We want to make sure we're doing a good. So, you know, some well, so and so might be able to get it for you like in a minute. Well. We're going to dig a little bit deeper, and we might take a little bit longer sure. um, to make sure that we have all of, all of the T's crossed and the I's dotted, and, and have everything that we need, um, and and make sure that we have the documents. You know, I, I can ask for tax returns, W twos. You know, any monkey can do things like that, but <laughs> it takes digging to find out. Well, look, this person, you know, <laughs> any monkey. <laughs> when the, the pay stub, lo and behold, it shows that you know he has child support taken out or. Something like that, you know, every week, you know. Yeah, all of a sudden. If you don't ask those questions, that. right? Oh yeah, I didn't think that mattered. Right. Yeah, um, I only have right. to pay it for eleven more months. Right. Yeah. Or the other thing that that you know, when I get the tax return in, sometimes people didn't mention anything. Um, they have another property in you know New Jersey. Right. Well, why does it matter? Well, There's no mortgage. Well, why is it? Why does it matter? <laughs> Just There's the next that. question. It <laughs> oh, that that's that's my mom's house that you know I inherited and I own it with my brother and my sister. Guess what? The taxes that, that and matter. insurance matter. Oh, yes. and so do the HOA fees. But yes. I don't have a mortgage. I'm debt free. No, you're not. No, you're not. So, so not, not for dig, dig, dig. And that's what we do is uh, for pre-approval purposes, we dig, we ask a lot more questions, and we get the documents. We ask them to send us the documents, and email them to me, fax them to me. You know, I'll drive and pick them up, whatever it is. But we need those documents in our hand, you know, the pay stubs and the tax returns and the W-2s, because we want to make sure that when we're issuing a pre-approval to you, um, the real estate community, that we're, we're going to back it up. Right. We've got the, and, the documentation. And if it deals iffy with the debt ratios, et cetera, then we're going to take it one step further and even upload it into Fannie Mae or for right. the next system or FHA and see if we can get findings, get that electronic approval Right. Back. And we've had that happen, too, where, you know, it's iffy for whatever reason. You know, they people will tell us right up front, well, I have this going on or that going on. You know what? That is a little iffy. Let's see right. if we get an approval on it. Right. Let's right. let's see what Fannie Mae thinks about it. Right. And we run it through the automated system. It's called an AUS, Automated Underwriting System. And we see if we get an approve eligible. Most, well, actually, no, not most lenders. I was going to say most lenders abide by the findings. Yeah. But there's a lot of lenders that don't abide by the findings. And they actually, it doesn't make a difference if you got an approve eligible through. It doesn't make a difference if Fannie Mae said yes, you know. If the credit score isn't just so, or the number of trade lines isn't just so, they, those are called overlays, and a lot of lenders have additional guidelines over and above what Fannie Mae right. um, says. We do not. Right. Fortunately, we go by whatever Fannie Mae says. We're Fannie Mae likes the loan. We're the lucky ones. I know, we are. Yeah, I know. It's all good. It's all we, good. We can do the loan. It's all good. Well, good. So this week we covered the difference between pre approval and pre qual. Um, I think in the future we're going to be talking about. You know more education for first-time home buyers. Right. Um, we gave you all the tips on the essential rules of self-protection. 
Um, and now we're protecting gonna, your money. Yeah, I'd rather put it that way. Protecting your money. So, so now we're going to talk about you know what um, our business group um, WPBA mm -hmm. and and our lunch get, and learn that we have coming and, up and, and getting connected and what's in the community. So go to WPBA.biz to get connected. Um, figure out what's going on in the community. We had a great mixer this past week over at Flamestone, which was awesome. Good place. Great turnout. Lo met lots of people. For the first good, time, go figure. Good. Thought I knew everybody in this town, not so much. Networking, networking, networking is growing. Yeah. Another upcoming show that we have is is networking tips and uh, marketing tips and everything. So as you know, we always try and education is key. Whether we're talking about mortgages, real estate, um, marketing, networking, it's all about um, growing your business Absolutely. and um, and working together to make things happen. And don't forget, July 9th is our next lunch and learn coming up. Uh, free to all real estate yep. um, agents out there, licensed Pat, realtors. Yes, come on out. It's at 1130 on July 9th. Carabas in Port Ritchie. It's on, um, it's, did you say it's on 11? It's at 1130. It's at 1130. On July 9th. Okay. Eastern time. <laughs> yes, make sure. Eastern time. Don't miss it. Patty, Carabas, yum. Patty Sutton will Need be I our say speaker more? <laughs> from Habitat. Habitat for community. community, and it's going to be great. Which is pretty be interesting moving. because Pinellas and Pasco just joined. Yes. So emerged. there's a whole bunch of new stuff going on at Habitat, and, and we're going to learn all about that. It does affect the real estate market. They'll tell you about some there of the go. great projects coming up, how it can affect the real estate value. So I want to give you my do RSVP to me if you don't mind, yes. please. You, um, catch us either on Facebook. I know it's all over Facebook and yep. such. Email Barry or I or whatever. It's just let us know you come, just so we can have just a find us on social media. Yeah. Can I give my head ism count. for the week before we end? He likes his isms. Yeah, okay. so here's, here's our ism for this week. If you work hard on your job, you will make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you will make a fortune. I love that. I, so, I, you know I, what? That's one of my favorites, too. I, I do like that. I like to say people are working hard on themselves just by watching our show because they're trying to educate, educate themselves. Education. So if you keep watching our show, you're going to make a fortune. That's my point. Well, you probably need to do more than that, but it's a good thought. <laughs> anyway. It's a thank, good start. <laughs> th thanks for watching us, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Don't forget, share us, like us. We're all over social media. And Thank you, everyone. We are today and every day. Moving forward. We'll see you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye-bye.